Albert smiled right back. He was just going to tell her his name was really Albert and he didn't know what he was either when Peg pulled her hand away and grabbed Walt. That same hand that had been so gentle with Albert sent Walt flying through the air towards the other moving three on the ground. As he sailed away, Walt shouted, they'll be coming for you next, just like... Poor Walt never got to finish as he landed in a splash right near the other walking three. Hey Peg, watch it, he shouted. You'll start an apple war. Apple core, shouted Peg in a very strange voice. Who is your friend, shouted the other three, also in a strange voice. And then the two started laughing and throwing old apples and even a few new ones at each other. There were a lot of shouting apples and many more nervous ones. Some hit, some hit the moving three near the ground. Some even splashed into other apples. Finally, the stopped. Peg climbed down and the two walking trees rattled away. The orchard was quiet again. Albert looked around him. Walt and the older apples were gone, splashed on the ground. Some of the younger apples were bruised and hurt. Albert knew they wouldn't last long on the ground, away from their stems. He could hear them crying. Albert didn't understand. He was unhappy and sad. He was angry and mad. These walking trees had no idea how hard it was to be an apple hanging on a limb with the hot sun and the rain and the worms and the birds, being the best you could even if you weren't sure what that was. Walt had said one day the walking trees would come and take them away, but that's not what had happened at all. This is my second season in the orchard, Walt had said on a quiet day when most of the young apples were in a listening mood. Once I was young like you, but when the moving trees came and took most of us away, I was left behind. The warm ball didn't stay as long or climb so high. The leaves changed colours, yellow, red, black, and fell to the ground or were blown off by the wind. Then it got cold. White flakes fell out of the sky, covering the ground and the tops of the branches. Most of the animals left and puddles turned hard as a branch on a tree, and so did I. This was hard for Albert and the others to believe. Then, said Walt, the days got longer and warmer. The white on the ground and on the trees turned to water, I went all soft like I am now and my skin already brown started to wrinkle. That's not the only thing that went soft, said Tyler and the others laughed. Tiny leaves began to grow on the trees, Walt went on, and tiny little white shapes like the ones on the ground covered the trees. They have the most beautiful smell. Bees land on the shapes over and over and then fly away. Then each shape breaks into little flakes that fall to the ground, leaving behind a tiny green ball that gets bigger and redder and becomes an Albert, or a Tyler, or a Clara. You mean, said Tyler, when Walt had finished, that I come from a tiny little coloured shape, like the ones on the ground the bees visit? That's right, said Walt. Then how come the shapes on the ground don't turn into apples? I don't believe a word you're saying. All the other apples laughed, and Walt, who didn't know why the ground wasn't growing apples, didn't know what to say. Most of the young apples didn't believe Walt, even though the other old apples said he was telling the truth. But Albert didn't see why Walt would lie, and he didn't think Walt could make up a story like that all by himself. Now Albert wasn't sure. Was Walt right? Would Peg and others like her still come to take Albert away? Peg's hand around Albert, even though she'd been so mean to Walt and the others, had felt as good and right as the water and sugar that grew inside him. If the walking trees did come for him one day, he hoped it would be Peg. As the days passed, Tyler kept teasing Albert about his size. Albert knew he wasn't growing as quickly as the others, but he felt stronger now he was getting more sun. He tried not to let Tyler bother him, but he did. One day lots of people appeared in the orchard and made many rattly things. They climbed up and began to pull all the apples off their branches. Walt had been right. All the apples were shouting things like, No, please, or... If you don't mind, I'd rather stay here. Some of the more selfish apples, like Tyler, were saying things like, Take him, not me. But the people paid no attention. If they could hear the apples speak, 
they didn't answer. Albert was a bit scared when he was picked. He never saw Peg. Down he went into a large basket filled with many apples Albert had never met before and some that he'd, be, he'd seen only from a distance. Albert was tumbled about and bumped into larger apples. He could feel a soft spot on his skin. He didn't feel right and he didn't like it much. He was glad that part of him was hidden from the others and he faced away from it. The apples spent a long time shivering in the dark and the cold. Many of the apples were very sad and miserable, but Albert felt the cold and dark was good for his soft spot and it was helping to save him for something special. Then the doors opened, letting in the light, making them all squint, and another rattly thing took them to the most amazing place Albert had ever seen. It was full of lots of different shapes and smells. Some bright orange shapes with bumpy skins were round like apples. There were yellow ones that were long, skinny and curved, like the new moon he had seen in the apple tree at night. There were some red ones, wrinkled and dried up. A moving tree walking by, and there were lots of them, had said, look at the pomegranates. There was an apple of a strange name, thought Albert. He tried to speak to the strange apples, but it was too noisy. There seemed to be hundreds of walking trees. Sometimes they would stop in front of Albert's basket. Hans would reach in and take some apples away, but not Albert. Help, help, shouted Tyler in the hand of a very large moving tree with lots of pink showing. And of course, no one did. Albert thought it was his turn many times, but people, turning him around and seeing his size and his soft spot, set him back down. This one is small and it has a bruise, said one. Then Albert saw a walking tree he'd never seen before. Some had been small, like her, but the lower trunks of this tree had extra coverings. Parts of it shone in the light and parts of it were brown and smelled like leather. Under the tree's upper branches, straight stems reached to the ground. The tiny branches that most moving trees use to hold things were wrapped around the stems. And this walking tree used the straight stems to move, hopping back and forth between them and her lower trunks that didn't seem able to move on their own. Albert felt a tingle. He didn't know why, but it felt right to Albert to be where he was. He wasn't afraid to be chosen like Tyler. The little girl with the long stems and the funny way of moving stopped in front of Albert. A larger tree beside her stopped too. Look at this tiny apple, Dad, she cried, reaching for Albert. It's little, just like me. Albert liked the touch of the little girl's hand around him, and he was a little sad to feel himself handed to Dad. Oh, Holly, said the man turning Albert over. It's bruised. You don't want this apple. Put it back and get another one that's bigger. You want one that's perfect. Holly took the apple and turned Albert slowly, looking at his bruise. He could see her eyes were good and strong, like pegs. He smiled back as hard as he could. He could see she was thinking about him. Dad, she said, turning to the larger tree, you wouldn't be put me back just because my legs wouldn't work right, or I'm not perfect, would you? Both Albert and Holly looked at the man, but he turned his head away. Albert saw that two large drops of water had filled his eyes. Albert was wondering if that was where rain came from, when the little girl squeezed Albert tightly. I want this apple, Daddy, she said, and Albert saw the man rub at his eyes with his movable upper branch. Holly kept Albert in her jacket pocket for a long time that day. When they stopped, she would reach awkwardly in, pull him out, shine him on her sleeve and smile on him. Albert saw many more sights and wonders at the market that day before he felt himself moving closer than he'd ever been to Holly's face. He looked into her eyes and saw they were brown and kind and that she loved every bit of Albert. It didn't surprise Albert when her teeth bit into his skin. It didn't hurt, it tickled. He wasn't sad to be eaten, he wasn't angry anymore either. He was happy to help Holly grow and be strong. He knew now that was the best thing any apple could do.